The Honda Inspiration Award is given each year to one courageous, resilient young woman, and this year's recipient is no exception. Imani McGee Stafford of the University of Texas came back from a leg injury to lead the Longhorns in blocks and field goal percentage en route to earning all Big 12 honors. But beneath it all, Imani was facing a profound struggle that far transcended sports. Attempting suicide and not succeeding is like the worst feeling ever. Waking up every day and not wanting to be there is, I don't, I don't want to explain it. It's not a, it's not really something I want people to understand, to be honest. I don't want you to know what that pain feels like. Early on, when she was a child, uh, a little baby, she was very uh, open, very caring. We were two peas in a pod. Being a single parent at that time, it was just her and I. After I lost custody, from 3 to 13, we really didn't even hardly see each other. Though her mother wasn't around, Amani grew up active and happy. But as she settled into life with her father's second wife and her children, the once talkative Amani grew quiet. It was really, really subtle. It was If you weren't really completely tuned in, you'd miss it. It just felt like I couldn't. I couldn't communicate with people how I really felt. And so I was just like, well, no reason to be here. By the age of 17, Amani had tried to take her life on three separate occasions. And despite discovering basketball and having immense success, including a state championship and a gold medal with the US FIBA youth team, something still wasn't right. I had like all these accomplishments and it just felt like I still wasn't happy. I didn't know what was wrong, I just knew something was wrong. And I kind of felt like people got sick of hearing that you aren't happy. She was having recurring nightmares about incidents from her childhood, buried memories that led her to realize she'd been repeatedly molested by a family member from age eight to 12. Amani finally found the courage to tell her father. It was as if my heart was ripped from my chest. What added a level of, uh, I think, emotional weight for me that she didn't want to do anything about it. In fact, she insisted that we don't even say anything. I'm her daddy, and I'm, I was supposed to protect her. <laughs> I didn't know what was wrong. Like, I didn't know what sex was. What, like, you just don't know those things as a kid. I think I always knew it was a serious problem. I guess I just didn't know how to deal with it. Hoping a scene change would turn things around, Amani accepted a scholarship to play basketball at the University of Texas. But a few months in, she still remained isolated. Unsure of how things would get better, she discovered an unexpected outlet. And finally, the girl who had lost her voice found a way to speak louder than she ever imagined. Learning what love truly feels like would be a difficult process. It would mean unlearning the abuse that has tricked you for years, unbearing your heart and trusting. This has never come easy for you but I promise you are up for the challenge. I've been able to deal with a lot of things that I, I hadn't when I was at home, like how to be bigger than what happened to me, how to get over it, deal with it, and try to heal. Slam poetry became her therapy, and Imani discovered that her words could help others confront their own issues. I'm Supergirl, and I'm here to save the world. She's a voice for others who can't fight for themselves. I think anybody that can go out and inspire people to save their lives, I think that's truly amazing. I think what's inspiring to me about Imani is that she's not afraid to tell the story. She's not afraid to say to a young person that's struggling, you can do this. I don't know what I'm gonna change, I don't know, but knowing that I'm making a difference or I'm impacting someone live or I'm helping someone that that's relevant for me. I think that's like the end game for me. In route to becoming a better person, you may have to let go of the person that everyone thought you were. And that's okay. It's okay to make choices. It's okay to save yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2015 Honda Inspiration Award winner, Imani McGee Stafford. Okay, I need some higher heels. <laughs> Imani, tell me about the first time you got up on stage, you grabbed that microphone, and you started sharing your story. Um, 
I think it was just really nerve wracking and I don't think it was, it wasn't intentional. Like I just write because that, that's what helps me heal. And the first time I said the poem about my station, my teammate's mother came up to me like crying. Like I've never told my story, you just told my story. And I guess that kind of just made me feel like I was doing something relevant. Like it was bigger than me. And what would you like to accomplish with telling your story? What's next? How big do you want this to be? What can we look forward to? Um, this wasn't supposed to be this big, so. <laughs> Um, I'm just excited to know that I'm helping somebody that I just hope that in, it, there's a girl out there like me and that can look up to me and say like if she can do it I can. Absolutely. I think we all believe that now just from seeing your short piece. I'm sure people that hear your story feel the same way. Your mother and your father are here in the audience today. What does that mean to you to see them both supporting you? Um, it's great. I think when you have a story of abuse, people think that your parents are horrible people and that they didn't do good or something. And my parents are great people. I love them to death. And, <laughs> you know, like, it was just bad circumstances. It wasn't anything that they failed at. They, it just, sometimes life sucks. Well, thank you for sharing your story.